While we have seen and noticed the resemblance that the new Zenith Chronomaster has with Rolex Daytona, the first Zenith El Primero has a history a little beyond that, and the first reference for Zenith El Primero was launched over 50 years ago, in 1969. The first thing we notice in any watch is the dial. And before we talk about the resemblance this Zenith has with the Daytona, let's talk about where Rolex Zenith Daytona from before 2000 takes its nickname from. While we know today that Rolex make everything in-house, this wasn't always the case. What's interesting is that while Rolex have always taken pride in perpetual watches with self-winding rotors, the Daytona was always equipped with manual winding movement until late 80s. This was the time when Rolex reached out to Zenith to use their legendary Al Primero movement in the Daytona to make it a chronograph watch that was also self-winding. Zenith Al Primero 400 was the best self-winding chronograph available on the market at the time. So the answer was straightforward for Rolex. Then later in 2000, 12 years after the release of Zenith Daytona, Rolex introduced a long-awaited upgrade. A Daytona that was offered with a true in-house movement caliber in a model reference 116520. Coming back to Zenith Chronograph, where originally Rolex took a page from Zenith's chapter of success in the movement making. This time, it was Zenith's turn to pick some cues and design elements that contributed towards the success of Rolex Daytona to what it is today. And the first thing you notice when looking at all new Zenith Chronomaster sports is the resemblance it has with the Rolex Daytona. And while many would argue to say that this is an homage model to the Daytona, I personally don't think so. And this is because while the Zenith Chronomaster does have some design characters copied from the Daytona. It still maintains some core design characters of its own too. So calling it an homage to Daytona is probably a bit of overstatement, exaggeration or maybe a false marketing. Let's start off with the design elements that are true to Al Primero characters and we have subdials at 3, 6 and 9 o'clock that are not just overlapping rather come in three different colors. There's a grayish blue subdial at 3 o'clock, anthracite colored at 6 o'clock, and light silver subdial at 9 o'clock. And the overall layout, color, and design of subdials basically remain the same as before. We have a date at 4.30 position, and that's not just something that's original, rather it's an added feature, especially if you use your watches to look for the date too, as most chronograph watches don't come with a date function. The case profile is original and has not only been used previously, it is also very different than Daytona. There's also no crown guards, which is obviously not the case with Daytona. The hour markers and dial hands, although appear to share the design cues with Daytona, yet they are original and have been in use in the Chrono Master line even before the release of this model, or shall I say, before the release of this controversial model. Now talking about the design similarities, and this is where the controversy starts, primarily because there are some design cues that appear to have been copied from the Daytona, that fortunately or unfortunately make this watch look more like a Daytona than an original design. Starting off with the bezel, the rich black color, the bold engraving of the text, the contrast of black bezel with bright white dial, and the overall layout is very similar to what we see on Daytona. Also, the El Primero watches have previously come with circular rim at the dial periphery, which has been removed in this release. And this is something that takes away the typical El Primero looks and add more of a Daytona looks. The center polish links combined with the brushed side links for the bracelet and then also the clasp is pretty much exactly the same as Daytona, making the overall watch look very similar to Daytona especially when you see it from away or from third person's perspective. The watch comes with beautifully polished case sides and there's very elegant yet bold chamfering at the lugs which adds aggressive looks to the watch. The top surfaces of the lugs are brushed to complement the brushed side links of the bracelet and then the other side of the case 
also comes with the same beautifully polished treatment. The crown comes with zenith star embossed on it. What I personally consider as a positive is that the pushes here are not screwed in, rather they are push in only and this make it a whole lot easier to use the pushes when the watch is on the wrist. Similar is the case with the crown and it is not screwed in, rather it's pushed in only. Pulling the crown one step back allows quickly changing the date and pulling it another step back will hack the seconds hand and allow you to set the time accurately. Speaking of the case dimensions, the size of the watch measured at the outer extremity of bezel is 40.5 mm. So while Zenith marketed it as a 41 mm watch, it is a relatively small watch and it does look and wear smaller than a 41 mm watch even if you factor in the heft from the pushes and the crown. The size of the crystal or let's say the dial is 32 mm. So the dial to bezel ratio is adequately designed and it does look very well proportioned. The lug to lug height of the watch is 46.6 mm. So again, it wears smaller than typical sports watches at 41 mm. For reference, Rolex Amarina at 41 mm case has lug to lug of 47.3 mm. If you're thinking about the Daytona, it has a lug to lug of 46.3 mm. And while Daytona is technically a 1 mm smaller watch than Chronomaster, and it also already wears small for a 40 mm watch, the lug to lug here is not too different. The weight of the watch, size to 6.5 inches rest, is only 135 grams, which is interesting because size to same wrist, the Daytona also weighs about the same at 133 grams. Flipping the watch over, we have as beautiful view on side as the dial, thanks to sapphire crystal case back, showcasing Zenith Movement Caliber 3600. The El Primero is one of the most important chronograph movements ever made. And although originally it was released in 1969, this all new movement has caught up with the pace. And the new 3600 is a new chapter in Zenith's already successful movement history. The movement features measurement capability with the accuracy of one tenth of a second using chronograph seconds hand and has seconds and minute hand for the chronograph. Aesthetically, the 3600 movement looks about the same as the traditional 400 movement, but there are minor differences. That is, here the chronograph driving and coupling wheels are driven by a pinion on the escape wheel as opposed to the fourth wheel on 400 movement. This is also a high beat movement operating at 36,000 vibrations per hour, which results in smaller steps or smoother run for seconds hand. That is 10 vibrations in a second. The movement, despite being high beat, offers 60 hours of power reserve and comes with decent level of aesthetics. Although the finishing on the plates and the bridges is relatively just average, but still very good for the price. Thanks to the skeletonized rotor, the view of movement is almost always on display to offer the experience it has to offer. Under the macro, the hour hand comes with decent level of details. There's no intricate chamfers or bevels, but the surface treatment is overall well executed. The minute hand comes with similar finish as the hour hand and the surface treatment shows attention to details, which is always nice to see. The finish of the second hand and the overall workmanship really shows off and there's simply no flaw or quality issue on site. The small hands for subdial maintains the workmanship and overall, the details on site are great to see. The hour markers make no difference and then the surface finish and the overall execution is beautiful. The circular grooves in the subdials also maintain the standard of finish and there's simply nothing not to behold. The quality of Zenith Star and the text on the dial are consistent with the overall finish and even under close inspection, there's nothing that seems to fall through the cracks. All being said, my only disappointment is the date alignment and you can see in this clip that the date is not centered and you don't need a macro lens to see it. Rather you can check any clip of this video and the date was never centered. This is also unfortunately not limited to just one date. Rather I changed the date to different settings and unfortunately it was always misaligned. This is a bit disappointing because a misaligned date 
is such a poor sight to see that we typically spot fakes using a misaligned date. So seeing this in not just a brand new watch, rather also a latest release is quite sad and disappointing. Putting the watch in the dark, the watch has Lium on offer, but unfortunately, it becomes a two-hander watch in the dark and the subdials go blind. The Lium is also not the strongest point here and it also doesn't really last very long, leaving the watch in the dark for another 10 minutes, almost left the watch with absolutely no Lium to show. And this is quite a weaker Lium than I've typically seen in chronograph watches. On the wrist, the 41mm Zenith Chronomaster Sports wears like a charm. While it is marketed as a 41mm watch, it wears small and does look smaller than typical 41mm watches. My wrist size is 6.5 inches and wrist span is 55mm. And you can see that the watch with lug to lug of 46.6mm stays in the center of my wrist. The polished case profiles along with the center links on the bracelet not just look beautiful but also add to the dressy looks to what is actually a sports watch. Wearing this watch, I do feel that it looked a lot more like Daytona than you would feel when you break it down to a component level. And I think it is likely because of the bezel, the contrast of white dial and the bracelet and the clasp that are very similar. The watch case thickness is 13.6 mm. So it's not a thin watch overall. But thanks to tapered and chamfered lugs, it not just not looks that thick but also allows the cuff to slip over without any problems. The bracelet has very similar looks to one on Daytona and the clasp is almost identical with the flip lock having zenith star like Daytona has Rolex crown. There's no easy link system in the clasp but there are micro adjustments to allow fine tuning of bracelet size for that snug fit. Zenith Chronomaster Sports is a watch with the movement that has a history of over 50 years and then the looks that are controversial. While it is a beautiful watch holistically from the front side to the back, the looks and the overall vibe it offers are very similar to the Rolex Daytona. My only concern may be that while it has all the bells and whistles, it may probably never have a facial recognition and an identity of its own. Despite all the horological achievements and history, it may remain the watch that while you can talk all day about when speaking of engineering marvel, but when it comes to the looks, it will probably be always mistaken for a Daytona. I wish this was a watch with more personalized characters, a watch that could be recognized for its own looks and identity. Imagine enjoying it on the wrist and someone spots it and compliments it only to say, nice day Dona.